So you are watching a new Netflix show in HDR10 or Dolby Vision on your OLED TV, and the picture looks okay, certainly bright enough at the start. But after a few minutes or so, the picture has gradually become darker, so much so that you are struggling to see any shadow detail. It is not until you summon the user menu or information bar, or when the movie cuts to a brighter scene that the picture brightness is restored. Even disabling energy saving or light sensor or AI brightness won't prevent this anomaly from happening again and again whenever there's a prolonged dark HDR scene. Because this type of auto dimming is unfortunately caused by a protective mechanism implemented on OLED televisions to reduce the risk of permanent burn in. It works based on APL or average picture level changes, so even if the picture is moving on screen and not static, as long as the APL doesn't change drastically, the OLED TV will slowly dim down the picture, causing dark HDR scenes to look even darker the longer it drags on. Some of the more notorious HDR or Dolby Vision titles that will trigger such an anomaly include numerous scenes in Ozark on Netflix, this low-light sequence from 1917, or Dune Part 1 which is again not the brightest of movies. Note that this undesirable auto-dimming behavior usually happens in HDR or Dolby Vision mode instead of in SDR, because the combination of maxed out OLED light and peak brightness settings seems to make the dimming algorithm more aggressive. To disable this type of auto-dimming on certain TV brands, unfortunately you will have to go into the service menu, which carries the risk of 1. Breaking your OLED TV if you don't know what you're doing, and 2 voiding your warranty if the TV manufacturer bothers to check the service log. If you are still hell-bent on doing this at your own risk, I've partly written some instructions in the YouTube description below, so you can still bail out at any time. For LG OLED televisions, you will need to buy a service remote from Amazon or eBay, press the Instart button, enter a 4-digit code. Then what you will need to do is to scroll to the OLED submenu and disable TPC which stands for Temporal Peak Luminance Control, after which your LG OLED won't auto-dim unnecessarily in prolonged dark HDR scenes again. While in LG's service menu, some of you might want to turn off GSR too. I will explain what this setting does later in this video. On Samsung OLEDs, enter the service menu using the instructions I've put in the YouTube description below. Go into the control submenu, then scroll down towards the bottom and click on QD option. Scroll down and click on Screensaver Brightness. Then you will need to reduce the default value of 7 all the way down to 0 by clicking the left button on your remote control 7 times. Again, I need to stress that most TVs keep a lock of the service menu being accessed. So even though TV technicians mostly don't bother checking the service lock, on the off chance that they do, be prepared to get told that your warranty has been voided. Which is why I think OLED panel suppliers and TV manufacturers should come up with a less intrusive algorithm which prevents this APL-based auto-dimming from happening when the maximum brightness in the scene is detected by the television to be under a certain threshold, say 100 nits, since such low brightness levels will not increase the risk of image retention and permanent burn-in anyway. This brings me to anomaly number 2, where you are playing an HDR game on your OLED TV, and after some time, the picture gradually becomes darker, therefore reducing the HDR impact and making your gameplay less enjoyable. This is another form of protective auto-dimming algorithm based upon static logo detection, so your OLED television is treating the HUD or heads-up display in games as static logos, and dimming down not only the HUD, but also the entire picture. Some OLED manufacturers let you turn off logo detection dimming, while others like Sony don't even provide the option in the user menu. On LG OLED televisions, turning off the adjust logo brightness setting in the regular user menu will stop the static elements from being dimmed in a localized manner. But there's another setting buried in the service menu, which dims down the entire picture however slightly due to the presence of static elements on screen, especially in HDR or high dynamic range. This under-the-hood logo detection dimming algorithm is called GSR or Global Sticky Reduction. No, not a tagline for NoFab, but an actual term you can find in the user manual for an LG Professional OLED display. To disable GSR on an LG OLED, 
you will need to go into the service menu and turn off the GSR enable setting under the OLED submenu. Let's talk about the next anomaly. On some OLED televisions, you may see a glowing, brighter contour along moving faces in dark scenes, for example in this slow dancing sequence from Wonder Woman, or along the hairline and shadows on Amy Adams' face as she walked inside the room in the 4K Blu-ray of Arrival. This is caused by a phenomenon called near black chrominance overshoot on WRGB OLED televisions, where when a dark tone switches to a slightly brighter one, the luminance would go above the target before being restored to the correct value, resulting in the glowing contours along dark edges in motion, or flashing artifacts in bit staffed material, such as this heavily compressed scene from Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, this anomaly seems to be endemic among WRGB OLED panels since 2018, so there's not much you can do about it without also affecting the picture quality. However, due to efforts by certain manufacturers, some WRGB OLED TVs are better at mitigating this issue, such as LG OLEDs, particularly 2022 models, Panasonic OLEDs, and to a lesser extent, Sony OLEDs from 2021 onwards. Of course, QD OLEDs, such as the Samsung S95B and the Sony A95K don't suffer from near-black chrominance overshoot, thanks to the absence of white subpixels, so you can choose to buy one of these QD OLEDs to avoid this issue altogether. Now, regardless of whether you have a QD OLED or a WRGB OLED, occasionally you may see one side of the bezel being wider than the other side. But before I explain how to fix this anomaly, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic started, some streaming providers, including Netflix, have throttled the bit rate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. You can also get more content that's not available in your region, perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you will get 83% off, as well as 3 extra months free with free antivirus subscription thrown in. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay, the anomaly of one side of your bezel on your OLED TV looking wider than the other is caused by pixel shifting, which is another protective mechanism to combat image retention and permanent screen burn. So to make your TV bezel width equal again, you just need to go into the user menu of your OLED television and turn off pixel shifting which may be given different names by various OLED manufacturers. If you don't notice unequal bezel width on your OLED TV, or it doesn't bother you that much, then I would just leave pixel shifting on to dampen the risk of image retention and burn in however slight. On to anomaly number 5. If you are coming from an LED LCD or even plasma television, slow panning shots on an OLED TV may look more stuttery as if the picture on screen is strobing or vibrating ever so slightly. This is caused by OLED's super-fast pixel response time. It's near instantaneous for an OLED pixel to switch to another color, compared to LED LCD televisions whose pixels take longer to change from one color to another. While OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time results in less motion blurring and smearing artifacts than LED LCD, Unfortunately, it also makes the mild stutter inherent in 24 frames per second movies more obvious, causing slow panning shots to appear more jarring to those who are not used to OLED motion. Fortunately, OLED manufacturers have recognized this as a problem, and developed various frame interpolation techniques to improve the smoothness of slow panning shots on OLED TVs without introducing too much soap opera effect or SOE. Let me show you how to achieve this on some of the more popular OLED brands I have in my test room. In alphabetical order, LG. Go into the picture menu, then into the clarity submenu. Scroll down and click on true motion, then select cinematic movement. Next, Panasonic. 
simply set intelligent frame creation to min to smooth out the mild 34p stutter. On Philips OLED TVs, set motion styles to movie, which will apply a small dose of motion interpolation to reduce the inherent 34p stutter. On Samsung OLEDs, go into the picture menu, then click on expert settings. Scroll down and click on picture clarity. Change picture clarity to custom, then set judder reduction to either 1 or 2 to smooth out the 24p stutter. On Sony OLEDs, go into the picture menu, then scroll down and make sure motion flow is set to custom. After that, set the smoothness control to 1 to apply a small dose of interpolation to minimize the OLED stutter. To clarify, I myself don't use any of these motion interpolation settings when watching 24p movies, because to my purest eyes, even the best film smoothing algorithm would still introduce some opera effect or SOE however mal, especially during fast moving sequences. That said, I won't hold it against you if you use these film smoothing settings to reduce OLED's stroboscopic effect when displaying low frame rate content such as 24fps movies. Talking about TV settings, there's actually one sneaky setting buried in the user menu that actually worsens the picture quality on your OLED TV. To find out what the setting is and how to disable it, please watch my instruction video by clicking here.